Hello and welcome back everyone. We have a dear friend coming back on the channel. We can't believe it's almost been a year already since we had her on. Of course, we are speaking about the one and only Anne Vucic. She is a great Medjugorje expert. And that's why probably she's get herself wrapped into many, many things Medjugorje that she's going to be discussing with us. Some very good stories of Medjugorje that maybe you haven't heard before. We're going to speak also about the recent messages of 2024 that have a lot of people speaking more about the uniqueness of them. And also, there's a great Medjugorje movie project underway. And as it's been almost a year, Anne, we're very much looking forward to everything you want to share with us. But first of all, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for giving us your precious time. Thank you, Mark. It's so great to be back with you. Like you said, I can't believe it's been that long since we connected. It feels like it was just a few months ago, but great to be here with you. Greetings to you. Greetings to all of your viewers. So always great to be talking about Medjugorje, one of my favorite subjects in the world. Yes, absolutely. Well, I was out there in August again, and for the first time in a few years, and like every other time, you just come back feeling as if you've been at the top of the mountain at the Transfiguration, and then you need to come back home and keep it going. But I came back with great conviction, as always, of the faith, a great sense of peace that really had the new line for me as Medjugorje is certainly the crown of these times when it comes to everything Our Lady's doing. It, it just something happens there, and as much love I have for Fatima, Garib and Dal, Lourdes, which I've been to as well in pilgrimage, there's just something with Medjugorje, and uh, maybe further we talk into that, we can maybe get an understanding of why everyone has such a unique, powerful experience there, uh, like nowhere else on Earth. So, Anne, almost a year, and... The last time I spoke to you, we were looking to speak about where can we go with this Medjugorje project. We weren't going to, you weren't, the team aren't looking to do a movie based on the story of Medjugorje. It's more about the fruits of Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. And uh, with your expertise and knowledge of Medjugorje coming in along with Holly Carney, who's helped setting up the movie, you've managed to tie in a well-known name of Lucas Foster in Hollywood, one of the one of the great writers and great movie uh, producers of Law Abiding Citizen, Jared Butler, Man on Fire, Denzel Washington, my type of movies. And um, 11 months have passed. What's been <laughs> happening? What's the updates? I know there's a lot oh of secrets in what's happening for good reason. Yes. What can you share with us? Yeah, a lot of really wonderful things have happened. Um, yeah, you know, it, we've really felt the hand of Our Lady guiding this entire project. And, um, you know, as you said, uh, Lucas Foster did come on board this project. And as he says it himself, when Holly, who's been a producing partner of Lucas's for several years on different projects, when Holly approached him and said, would you make this movie with us? He, as he says himself, he's like, I don't know why I said yes, but I just instinctively said yes. And, uh, you know, I think that instinctively uh, was the prompting of the Holy Spirit to lead him. And uh, one of the first things that we did after Lucas agreed to, to uh, you know, produce this film, we felt it was very important and he felt it was important to uh, go to Medjugorje so that he could experience what is this place? Because he he never heard of it. He didn't know anything about it. He, you know, he he just knew that it was a project that Holly brought to him, and he said yes without really knowing why. So we took Lucas. So Lucas, Holly, and I went to Medjugorje uh, just about nine months ago, ten months ago in uh, the spring of 2023, and uh, it was incredible. It was such an incredible experience. We we took him there with the intention of having him meet with all the church officials there so that they could meet him. And we had already met with them before that, which I think we talked about on the previous episode, but we had already met with him with all of them before that, you know, with the pastor of Medjugorje, the Franciscan superior, you know, the apostolic visitor, Bishop Cavalli, Father Yozozovko, the original pastor. We had met with all of them and gotten all of their wholehearted support of what we were doing. And um, like you said, we told all of them, and this was, you know, Lucas's, vision as well, 
that we, there's so many wonderful documentaries and books and, you know, articles available on the actual story of Medjugorje about the events, what happened there and, you know, the, the visionaries and the apparitions and all of that. And so we didn't feel like, you know, we should be retelling that story. What we all were much more interested in was what, as you mentioned, what are the fruits of Medjugorje and specifically looking at kind of depicting in the movie two questions. And those two questions would be, what happens to people when they go to Medjugorje? What do they encounter there? What do they experience? What, how are they changed? And, and the second question being, how is their life changed after they've had that experience in Medjugorje? And how does that change in their life impact how they live and how they impact, impact other people around them? And so that's what our story is going to focus on, and we're not, we're not, um, we're being very sort of keeping close to the chest what the storyline is. We do have a storyline. We do know where this is going to go, um, and we're very excited about it. And what we can say about it at this point is, you know, we we are we are not looking to make a Catholic movie, and that might sound like a sort of a shocking thing to say to people when we talk about a movie about Medjugorje, but the reason we say that is because. If we make a movie that's overtly Catholic, only Catholic people are going to go see it. And we want to make a movie that's going to reach a global audience with the message of Medjugorje. And so given that Lucas Foster is the producer on this movie, and Lucas Foster has such an incredible track record of, of, of um, you know, critically acclaimed and financially successful global films, this will be along that, uh, you know, in, in that same genre. This is going to be a combination of spirituality, action, adventure, and even some comedy. And so, you know, we're very excited about that. And um, where, you know, his own experience in Medjugorje, he was blown away by it. <laughs> One of the things I like to share with people is that before he went there, before he knew really what, what it was and what to expect and what happens there, Holly had mentioned to him that, 50 million people from throughout the world had traveled to Medjugorje. And when he heard that, he was like, 50 million people have traveled to this little village in the middle of nowhere, like why? But after he went there and after his just deep, after he was deeply touched and moved by the experience, he asked a different question. And at the end of that pilgrimage, the question that he asked was this, he said, why have only 50 million people come here? And he said, our movie is gonna change that. And I believe it. It's it, it is. It's very exciting. You got something from that week to say that. That's a man with conviction and ready to go, isn't yes. it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, yeah, we are we're 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 plotting along right now. We uh, Lucas is in the process of of uh, figuring out who he wants to write the screenplay. Um, we he's got several people in mind, and he's in dialogue with them. And they're all, I, I know one of the people on his shortlist. And when I saw, I, I can't name any names at this point, but when I saw this person's credentials, I, I mean, literally my mouth was left hanging open. This was somebody who's won um, Golden Globe Awards, Emmy Awards, who's been nominated for Academy Awards, who's been nominated and I think won some BAFTA Awards as well. Um, and, you know, Lucas has said all along, he wants to use the top quality people to write it, to direct it, to act in it, because he wants to make this the best movie he can. He is he's very deeply personally in, in invested uh, in making this a, a a wonderful movie. And so it's it's just exciting to be a part of it. Well, I think on top of his uh, his background and his career and his success, you know, his heaven backing him up with this movie. That's even extra. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we really have felt the guiding hand of Our Lady in this whole project. And um, I, you know, my prayer and, you know, I, I ask your viewers to support us with prayer because we want every step of the way to be um, covered by the mantle of Our Lady, to be walking in the will of the Lord, to be doing what Our Lady desires, to be doing what the Lord desires. And for that reason, actually, when we had all of the meetings with the church officials, Holly had told all of them, we will let you see the script and we want to hear, we want your feedback on it. And so this is being made not just with their support, with the support of the church officials in Medjugorje, 
but it's being made with their cooperation as well um, at the point of, you know, when they review the script and let us know their thoughts on it. So, you know, that just gives me such a sense of security that this is being done in right order. It's being done, you know, under obedience to the church there. And when you act in that way, you can't help but have the Lord's blessing. So, yeah, it's it's beautiful. That's great. I think I remember last year when Holly was on with you, she said Father Yozo was tickled pink about the movie. And uh, he says it was Our Lady that's brought you here to do this. He was very yes. important. He said to us, he said to us, Our Lady has been waiting for you to make this movie. And we all started crying. <laughs> We all started crying. I, you know, I was translating for Father Yozo, um, you know, for the whole conversation. And he said those words and I, I just got all choked up. I could barely get them out in English when I, you know, when I heard them in Croatian. And then, of course, when I said them in English, you know, the others that were in the room, we all just started, you know, tears just flooded our eyes. There's such a sense of joy and gratitude for that. Because well, we believe it. We really believe that Our Lady has been waiting for us to make this movie. No, I can't wait. I mean, for all you see what's happening in the world, you wonder if we'll ever get a chance to see much in the future. But we have to keep that hope going, don't we? And mm -hmm. that's all our lady's ever given us is constant hope, constant assurance and uh, instruction along the way. And if she's yeah. truly wanting this movie to come about, uh, it's definitely going to happen. And I just, I, I think as well... Um, with a million, like you say, 50 million people already have come. How many times have they come? I know for me, I'm one of those 50 million. I've mm -hmm. been to Medjugorje five or six times now. I'm booked up to go this Easter again. Can't wait. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't understand why it was a few years in between the last two pilgrimages, uh, because even then I could see a little difference in the place, but still... What hits the heart hits the heart. And I think mm -hmm. it's always something I go because there's always something new to get. And knowing that nature of God incidences and things like that in Medjugorje, is there anything you can remember or you can share about that time when you were all there? Any, you know, just things happening other than what you've said or what you're allowed to say? Are you, are you talking about when we were there with Lucas, you mean? Yeah, or any time thereafter. Uh -huh. any, any, I just love the idea. It doesn't need to be, you know, Medjugorje with all the stories. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be sensationalist, unless there are. <laughs> but I just mean, like, I love how the spirit moves, yeah. and the God incidences of people and who knows who, and, and just something that happens right there and then, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, when, I th when um, you had mentioned at the beginning that... Um, You've been to Lourdes and Fatima, and so have I, and they're beautiful, incredible places. There's something different about Medjugorje. And um, what the way that I view what happens in Medjugorje, and th certainly this isn't exclusive to Medjugorje, this happens whenever hearts are open to the Lord, right? But there's a particular grace given in Medjugorje where people have a personal encounter with God. And when you have that personal encounter with God, it it's a game changer. It changes everything. That's what happened for me. I had a personal encounter with God. I'm sure you had that encounter with God. That's what keeps me going back there because it's like going home. It's like going to the place where you fell in love. It's like going to the place where you encountered something so incredible, something that changes your reality, changes your life, changes your heart. And I, you know, the great miracle of Medjugorje, you know what, there's all kinds of miracles that happen there. There's signs and wonders and spinning suns and rosaries that turn to gold and people that have been healed. And I don't say all of that to minimize the power and the beauty of all of that, because that's a, a gift given as well by heaven. But really the great power of Medjugorje is that people have that encounter with God and that's what changes their life. And, and that's the heart of the movie. You know, what is it that, as I said, two questions, what happens to people there and how does that change their lives? And to me, that's one of the most incredible things that you can say about Medjugorje is that it is a place of encounter. And because of that, it's also a place of great hope because um, Medjugorje is a, is, I, I say this all the time, Medjugorje is the place of God's intervention in the world today. It is the place of a pouring out of such abundant graces 
that I don't think we've seen these kinds of graces being poured out in our lifetime and probably for many years before our lifetime, the kind of graces that the Lord is pouring out. And so that is such, in the, you know, in the midst of the sort of the darkness that's all around us, that is such an incredible sign of hope. That is such an incredible thing that's happening in our world that God is pouring out so many graces in this little village in the middle of nowhere in Bosnia Herzegovina with a hard to pronounce name. God is doing a great work there. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Maybe that's a good bridge to get to the next part of their our video, the end of discussion, because for all these years now, since 1981, Our Lady's been appearing daily and been giving us messages. And of course, we know for so many years now, the visionary Maria gives us the monthly message on the 25th of every month for the world. But... Um, as much as there's been unique times and requests and miracles throughout Medjugorje history, 2024 seemed to have taken off in a very unique way where Our Lady asked people to be up Apparition Hill on uh, in January for the special message with Maria being there as well. And I watched it from online and spread the word for everywhere, for everyone to go on and watch online. And uh, if we couldn't go over how for all those hours, it reminded me of Fatima. The people were all there anticipating for the apparition and they were in the soaking rain. Mm -hmm. But then the, as they were finishing the last decade of the rosary after what three hours of praying, it's like the rain stopped and within a few minutes Our Lady appeared and then we got the message. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've done a video on it uh, back when it was happening and things. But then in February, it was just like one sentence, a time of prayer, I think it was, to keep praying. And she's repeated it again this month about being a time of prayer. Mm -hmm. And she spoke about how Darnell may have seized the hearts of, of many people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were, I noticed in a few Facebook pages, a lot of people were asking, what's the Darnell? And I mean, I knew it to be some sort of weed or something like that because it's in the Gospels. And then you can start working out, making sense of it. But so far in these three months of this year, there seems to be a continuance of something a little bit different. I don't know if, if you're hearing much about it from Medjugorje, you're picking that up yourself. But what could you say about that? Well, yeah, I want to go back to or start with uh, the message uh, or what happened on January 1st. Um, you know, just in the sort of the context of the messages that Our Lady gives, right? She So... For years now, she's been giving messages on the 25th of the month through the Visionary Maria. And this, so, uh, but on December 31st of this last year, December 31st at Maria's regular, and just to recount, I know you did a video, but if there's somebody here who hasn't seen it uh, or didn't know about what happened on December 31st, Our Lady asked, um, told Maria to invite people to come to Apparition Hill the next day January 1st, 2024, to come to the hill at three o'clock and to pray for three hours in preparation for Maria's regular apparition on uh, on that day. So Maria sees Our Lady every, every evening. And so, as you said, I mean, thousands of people went to that hill and it was rain. I mean, the, the hill was packed and it was raining. And, you know, the whole thing was... Um, unusual you know it, it hadn't happened in a long time that our lady had uh asked uh people to go up to the hill that way especially i i don't know i i honestly can't say i know a hundred percent whether she ever did that i don't know that she ever said go up to the hill three hours before and pray there in, in preparation for my coming she may have but i certainly don't remember that in a long time and then when she had the apparition, I, I just want to read it. I, I have it right here because even what she said was so unusual compared to the way she normally speaks. And I just thought it was so beautiful. So let me just read you what she said. Um, okay. During the moment of the apparition, Our Lady came joyfully. She prayed over us. And at the end, she said, thank you for having responded to my call and for praying for my intentions. Now this line, I, I just went, when I read this, when I heard this, 
you will not regret it. So she's saying, you know, thank you for praying for responding to my call for praying for my intentions. You will not regret it. Neither you nor your children, nor your children's children. And then she blessed us all. You know, for, I, I, you know, we don't know beyond that what the point of that was and why Our Lady asked everybody to be there for those three hours. It certainly seems like it was something important and something significant, enough for her to say, you, your children, and your children's children will not regret that you prayed for my intentions here on this day. I just, I was so deeply moved by that. You know, maybe we'll find out one day when hopefully God willing, we get to heaven. We may not find out Earthside what that meant, but it felt like that was something really significant. And that was the first day of the year. That was how we began the new year on the great feast day of Mary, the mother of God on January 1st, 2024. And that was how she began the year off. So, you know, what does that mean? I don't know. I, I don't know that you know, anybody has any insight into that beyond Maria, even if she does, I don't know if she does. Um, and then after that, we get to the the message that Our Lady gave you, where you had mentioned the Darnell um, that Our Lady gave just a few days ago. And I have to admit, you know, um, when I read that, I probably like a lot of people, I thought it was a typo. I thought it was, a mis I was like, wait, what, what is that? I had, I was personally, I was not familiar with that term. I had, I had never seen that in the Gospels, and probably because a lot of times, as you said, that word is translated as weeds. And in fact, I was, um, you know, just to say a little bit about the translation process, I know the people, you know, Our Lady, of course, gives the message in Croatian, and then there are a team of translators in Medjugorje, people who, you know, there's a, a couple of people who get together um, to translate it into English, into Spanish, into Italian, into the different languages, and then spread it out throughout the world. And they take this very seriously, and they carefully discern every word to make sure that they have the right interpretation, the right meaning, um, according to what Maria understood Our Lady to mean. And when I, I read the message in Croatian, um, and in Croatian, the word that was used for Darnell is a word when I'm translating, if somebody had said this word, the word was kukol, I would have translated that word as weeds. Um, and, you know, it comes from the, you know, we, we see that, that word in the parable, the weeds and the, you know, the weeds among the wheat. Uh, but they very specifically chose the word darnell instead of using the word weeds. And I think that's really, really interesting. And it's, you know, I, again, I'm, you know, it's certainly... Um, I'm not the one to apply any interpretations to, to the message. Um, you know, that's up to, you know, the church to do. However, if you just kind of from a um, surface reading of it, when I looked up, what does Darnell mean? Darnell, it, you know, a lot of people thought, okay, is that is, is that a word that means Satan? Is that a word that means evil? It's not, it's a word, it's another word for a weed, except what it specifically means is that it's a, Oh, a type of weed that actually looks very much like wheat. And so as, as it grows, um, it's, you have to be very discerning. You have to know that wheat plant very well to recognize what is the wheat and what is the darnel, the, the, the wheat imitating weed. And, it, you know, isn't that what's happening today when so many surrogates are being offered to the, to the faith. So many surrogates are being offered for that true encounter with God. There's so many people who are turning to other things which yeah. may look to be good, but when, when in actuality, they lead to death. A Darnell, if ingested, can lead somebody to be very seriously sick or even to die. And, you know, I, I, it was, so was Our Lady trying to say to us, be careful about what is being offered out there that on the surface appears to be good. But if it's not something that you receive through the church, it, it can be something very dangerous. And there's so many surrogates that are being offered out there. And so was Our Lady cautioning us about that in that message? It certainly seems to me to be the case that that's what she was doing.
Yeah, I think uh, as well, we can always take that message for the world as we should. I think we can also take the message in me and my life. I remember years ago, someone says, if you replace the word children or child with your name, so, you know, like, dear children, it'd be like dear Mark or dear Anne and go through that message as if she's speaking to you. Um, I, th I think we all have to be careful with like, Satan is the deceiver. And there's a great book, I think it's the biggest selling book after the Bible, is The Imitation of Christ with Thomas A. Kempis. We have to be careful who we're imitating. Like that Darnell is almost imitating the wheat, Mm you know, the harvest, the grace, the growth of God in us. We have to be careful what we're taking in. There used to be a program years ago over here called You Are What You Eat. And it was all about nutrition and all that. But during the last couple of years of, you know, the lockdowns and stuff, I think we are what we eat and hear, what we digest through the eyes, what we get through the ears, as well as other things. So spiritually, psychologically. And I think what stood out for me as well for the times that it's happening, especially if people are watching other videos, I try and keep a more open mind to seeing what's going on in the world is what we all know is going on with warfares and and civil unrest and other things it's just mm -hmm. the world's in absolute chaos like never before certainly in the 38 years i've been alive i've never known anything like it and it just yeah. seems to have came out of nowhere like darnell shot up in the the harvest and as, mm -hmm. and as jesus says when the time comes for that for god to come and, and separate them then he will so we need to know that we're not Uh, being led through false idols and false teachings and and anything that's not of Christ and I, I think there's a big internet presence now of Catholic media where we have to be careful with self-righteousness and judgments and it is a bit hard to watch some things that are being reported coming out of the Catholic Church and it makes you wonder is this why Our Lady's been appearing not just from Medjugorje, but as far back as Fatima or even before maybe, repeating the same warnings, repeating the same things about what's coming. But Medjugorje is different that way because she doesn't bring in the Garabandal or the last right. elect or the Fatima way, although we can see it's still uh, important for today. She's got that clear focus of keeping us right with the spiritual growth. And I think that time of discernment of spirit and discernment of times is something we have to be very careful of what's growing in us. Would you yeah. say that's fair to put? Yeah. And, you know, um, it, I've, there's so much, um, because there's so much darkness out there, I think it's very easy sometimes to get um, overwhelmed with it, to you know, be very concerned about the world and the future and our families and our lives and our communities and, and to really be overwhelmed by some of the darkness that's out there. But if you look at the messages that Our Lady gives, the messages are messages of tremendous hope. They're messages of light. They're messages of life. They're messages about a future. There's me they're messages about the plan of God that he is unveiling specifically through Medjugorje. She often says, pray for the plans that my son and I have begun here in Medjugorje, that they may be realized. And we know that those plans are for the world. And, you know, um, I know lots of people who believe that we're kind of in end times and who uh, have very sort of doom and gloom approaches to the future. And, you know, people have to discern for themselves, you know, how they prepare for the future and all of that. But a lot of people spend their focus on, you know, building up their food supply and water supply. And, you know, and I'm not saying anything against that. All of that, you know, that, that, that may be a helpful thing to do for people. But in Medjugorje, what Our Lady is constantly talking to us about is building up our spiritual lives, building up the abundance of resources within our hearts. And that whatever happens in the world, if we are walking with the Lord, and one of my favorite exp expressions is, you know, being in the bark of Peter, being in the boat of Peter. If we are safely um, seated in the boat of St. Peter, in the, in the bosom of the Catholic Church, 
we will be safe. And if we are walking, you know, closely with our lady and with our Lord and with the, you know, the sacraments of our church, and if we are living that sacramental life, we we're, we're fine. You know, we're fine. We are living that life that our lady is calling us to. And that's why I, in the midst of all the stuff going on in the world today, there is great hope to be had. And there is, you know, to me, I look at the world and I feel excited about what God is doing because I see a great work of the Holy Spirit happening in and through Medjugorje. And that's why I'm just, you know, the, one of the, the, the main missions of my life, if not the main mission, is to help Medjugorje be more known and understood throughout the world. And, you know, that brings us back to the movie, The Lord Opening the Door, for me to be involved in that. But but I think it's the most important thing that 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 is happening in the world today. No, I agree. And I, I think I really felt that in August when I was over there as well. Um, there's always something to gain in the heart. And it, it makes me really reflect deeply. I'm, I, I can be quite deep in terms of where I've progressed in the journey of faith. And at the same time, I'm an open book. So I don't know if those two things together are good. But I, I just, for me... It was all or nothing. That, but not just the words, not just a thought. I left Medjugorje this time with a great next level up of conviction, like really true conviction. And it's all or nothing with the faith, all or nothing. And yeah. um, the joy and the peace through prayer and, and pushing yourself to do more than you would normally do. Yes, it's a pilgrimage and it's easier to do it there. But to me, it wasn't the case of up the hills and and doing other big events. I this time, it was different because it was just being with people. I went to the uh, it was a little cafe tea with Rosie, and uh -huh. uh, just a couple of people came along. Someone says, "Ah, if you go there this day, you'll meet people who just come in for a cup of tea, and they might be there themselves." Or just that and then yeah. walk through the vineyards like i've done many times over the the previous pilgrimages but mm -hmm. just passing people and just a little nod that they're saying the rosary this way i'm walking this way saying my rosary just back to like heaven on earth you imagine in heaven we're just going to be praying totally. all the time and praising <laughs> God. <laughs> it's the beauty and the power of of the universal church and you know the 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 i mean it's the way it should be it's the, you know, it's, we the should be. It gets me emotional sometimes as Medjugorje. Yeah. 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 And it's I'm right there with you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as it's phenomenal. I can't wait to be, I've never been at Easter, so this will be the first time at Easter. I'm looking forward to it. Um, never been, well, I'll be there uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, so I've never been there at Easter either. Oh, we'll just, there. Just we'll just be missing you. each other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> are you out yourself or is this more to do with the movie? Uh, no, no, I have a group. I have a group oh. there. You know, kind of like what you said, one of the things I love about being in Medjugorje, and I think anybody who's gone there with a pilgrimage group kind of has this experience as well. You go through such a beautiful, powerful experience together as a community when you go there on pilgrimage. And these people who maybe most of these people didn't know each other before they get there, we are like family at the end of that trip because we are sharing this deeply uh, personal emotional journey together and one of my favorite things to do when i'm in medjugorje is to sit around at you know tea with rosie or at you yeah. know colombo's or at you know hotel grace and have a cup of coffee or an iced coffee or whatever it is or a meal and talk about you know talk about each other's lives and talk about people's experiences in medjugorje and their journeys of faith and their encounters with the lord like that just fills my heart with so much joy that i just imagine that heaven is like that but you know, exponentially more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the priest over there, uh, Father Leon, I mean, again, it's on Mary TV like every morning Mass is. But I noticed this time uh, being over, he did put a gentle emphasis on how time is short. And one time before, he always gets that little five minutes before Mass just speaking mm -hmm. to us about something. It's quite good to get a little something each day. But he did say he was recently with Maria that week. This is back in August. And again, to emphasize time is short, you know, and this, make your choice. Be here, be real. Don't just do it here. You have to take it back. 
But that, um, and he says it again later in the week again about the time is short for that decision. And like you say, you're going in divine mercy. That's what Jesus says to us back in the 1930s through St. Faustina. Um, mm -hmm. I'm coming as the merciful saviour. This is the time to make your choice. Get as much grace as you can. And I think a few years ago, the way they, they translated the message one of the messages given was that it was the father coming home and emptying the bag to make sure everything was out. That was the word used when it was describing how God's given us unbelievable gifts that we've never been given before. And I'm hearing it repeated by certain priests online, like good priests. They keep saying things now like, you know, the saints from years and years, centuries ago, they saw these times what God allowed them to see and they wish they were living now rather yeah. than God. yes they, I've heard the same thing to be living yeah. now, yes I've heard the same thing that that in fact I can't remember I'm not going to remember offhand who it was but somebody uh, a very dear friend of mine a nun here who loved is it St. Anthony of the Desert I can't remember somebody a thousand years ago who who was or 500 years ago whatever it was um, was writing about these times and different, as you said, different people over the course of, of history who have written about um, that I've heard of. I can't quote any of them because I don't know. Off, I, I just can't remember offhand, but I remember the same thing that you do. People saying that, you know, they, they were almost envious of these times in which we're living because of the graces that are being poured out. I feel like I see that all around. I, you know, I feel like I see that in, in not just in what's happening in Medjugorje, although I do feel like that is the biggest one of the biggest sources of it in the world today but it just feels like there is an outpouring of the holy spirit happening in a beautiful way in the midst of you know the darkness that's going on i mean it's 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 very exciting to see what the lord is doing and that's why you know i, I kind of keep going back to the word hope but you know i think knowing that our lady continues to be with us every day in medjugorje that is a sign of tremendous hope for us Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And when I go to Medjugorje for the other different things covered and wondering about, you know, like um, I've had a good author on the channel, Xavier, and people have seen the videos uh, for here to watch. We're taking in a bigger context of Our Lady's apparitions all over. Um, I think I've lost my real thought, but without going off too much on a tangent, do, do you think there's a reason why now I mean, if you take in La Salette, if you take in Fatima, if you take in Akita Japan, or Garabandal as well. I mean, right now, with things happening in the world, it's Akita, Garabandal. I mean, this is what everyone's mm -hmm. talking because of the signs. And, and I have to say, quite a number are fitting very, very clearly for what's been said when you take all this into context. So Our Lady, for me, it's one big plan of God that Our Ladies came in these times. Like she says in Fatima, Jesus wishes to establish devotion to my Immaculate Heart. And mm -hmm. right back from Pope Leo XIII in 1884, having that experience, knowing that God granted the devil time to test humanity in the church, and mm -hmm. that battle began with the dragon and Our Lady and, and all that we could go into, you could draw a line over all those apparitions and have Medjugorje separate. What's the what's the strategy? What's what's happening there? I'll tell you. I I firmly believe, with all my heart, um, that all of those other apparitions that have happened, um, Medjugorje is the culmination of it. Medjugorje is, like you said, it's separate. It's different, and. Just to focus, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, why why I believe that. But, but you know, if you just look at the fact that Our Lady, you know, Fatima, which is one of the most regarded apparitions of all time, and in Medjugorje, Our Lady said, I have come to fulfill what I began in Fatima. And although she doesn't tell us specifically what that means, most people um, who follow both Fatima and Medjugorje believe that what that means is you know, in Fatima, she talked about the triumph of her Immaculate Heart. We don't know what that will look like. We don't know when that's going to be. You know, we don't know how that will play out. Um, but she has hinted at that. And her saying that she's come to Medjugorje to, to fulfill what she began in Fatima 
for many people means Medjugorje is about the bringing about of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's a whole, whatever that means, that's a whole different ball game. And, you know, I, I've had the incredible grace of uh, interpreting many hundreds of times for uh, the visionary Ivan. And I can tell you that um, I've, so I've translated these words for him hundreds of times. When he talks about the beginning, the very first time they had a conversation with Our Lady, um, I think it's important to really hear what Our Lady said, the very first conversation that she had with them. Because in some ways, that the very first message that she gave explains why she has come. Now, there's probably many reasons why she has come. It's not just one. But when you when you look at those words, what she said, and I'll, I'll tell you what she said in a second. When you look at those words of what she said, it's almost like the beginning chapter of a book. Or if you're writing a if you're writing a paper in college, you have an introductory chapter and that introductory chapter tells you what the purpose of the paper is or your introductory chapter of a book tells you what the what this book is about. Her words on that very first conversation are like her introduction to what are these apparitions about. And so when the first day they saw her, you know, for people that know the history of Medjugorje, they saw her first on June 24th, 1981. They all ran away. They were too afraid to go to her. And the next day, not knowing whether she was going to come back or not, they felt this like magnetic pull to go back to the hill. They go back to the hill. They're at the base of the hill, not knowing if she's going to appear again. But they see her up, up, up the hill. They run up the hill to her. And they fall on their knees in front of her and they begin the conversation with her. And in the conversation, you know, uh, I, I don't know the whole thing memorized, but here's this is the key. Um, towards the end of that initial dialogue, Our Lady says this to him. She says, uh, my dear children, I have come to tell you that the world, this world and this humanity is on the verge of destroying itself. Mm. She didn't say God is going to God is ending the world. She didn't say you know, uh, doom and doom, doom and gloom and darkness is coming. She said, this world and this humanity is on the verge of destroying itself. And those are very solemn words. Ivan says those every single time he talks about, if you go back and watch any videos of his on YouTube, and he's talking about the beginning days of the apparitions, he will repeat that line that Our Lady said to them, this world is on the verge of destroying itself. Several messages that she gave after that, in the weeks and months after that, she talked about difficult times ahead. She talked about, in one message she said, a great battle is about to, is about to happen between my son and Satan. Many souls are at stake. So, you know, again, I, I'm not saying this to put fear in people's hearts or to put an apocalyptic spin on any of this, but just to say that she has come with a somber message that that the situation in the world is serious but here's the hope that we know because she is here god is intervening and so just like you know just like we know in 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 the you know the prophets of the old testament when they're given a prophecy about something that's going to happen it's given so that that thing doesn't happen you know, it's given so that so that people can convert their lives and change so that that thing that that could that is on the horizon is thwarted. And it's the same thing with Medjugorje that, again, that's not the only reason she came. I, You know, who knows all of the reasons heaven has for these events. But that's what she said in the very beginning. And we also know that she's talked She's in many of her messages, if you go back and read some of her, particularly her earlier ones, but but in, even in later ones as well, she frequently says, and I, I mentioned this earlier, that she and her son have a plan for the world through Medjugorje. And so kind of the, the story is she came because the world is in danger. God is intervening to prevent that dangerous thing from happening. And through Medjugorje, God is unveiling the plan for how to for how to uh, uh, bring the world back to the to the way God wants it to be. It's a it's a it's a global. It's a I don't the global is not even the right word. I mean, it's a it's a, a unbelievable thing that's unfolding in front of us, um, where God is 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 uh, intervening in our world to set us on the right path. That's what Medjugorje is about. Yeah.
No, for sure, because it's, it's a conversation I had with people who have been devout with Medjugorje for many, many, many years. And um, I think I've just always had that natural, I don't know what you call it, inclination or attraction to just the apparitions. And I think because when we're used to the stories in the Bible and so long ago, we can't fix it in our heads. But the fact that she's been appearing more recently, and then, of course, Medjugorje today, then it's, it becomes more real and you want to know why and things. And that's what got me on that journey. Because, I mean, she's always gave the remedy. She's always been very blunt with messages where we're heading, you know, like, and it echoes a lot of warning inside the Catholic Church as well as humanity and Russia being the key principle with Fatima, for example, and where mm -hmm. things are now and all the rest of things that are fitting certain marrying prophecies or mystics and things like that. But for me with Medjugorje, it's like, well, I've told you repeatedly, it's happening, it's getting there, we're nearly mm -hmm. at it. But Medjugorje is the abundance of grace because where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. And mm -hmm. no matter how bad things are going to get to a, a final climax of everything, all the more grace is going to come. So when things may get worse in the world, as maybe it's probably likely to happen again, I don't get the fear about that. I used to have fear years ago when I read mm -hmm. some things. But I think that journey of living the messages have transformed that to the yeah. point where it's like, well, let's wait for the permanent signs. Let's wait for, well, not wait, obviously. I don't mean that because our lady says don't wait for the signs. <laughs> I now. know what you mean by that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the fact that I hurry up and come, let's do it. Yes. You know, yes. I'm praying for it to come, for God to come into the rescue. Because like mm -hmm. you say, it's humanity bringing these wars. It's humanity yes. that's saying no yes. to God. I think earlier in their messages, she said that humanity is walking into the future but without God. Oh, God, she did say that. We'll have the audacity to think we have created ourselves and our mind will be the, the new God and whatever. And mm -hmm. it, did she also say I've came to call back to call you back to God for the last time? Well, I was just going to say, you know, one of the other things that I think really points to the, the importance of Medjugorje is the fact that she has said that the, this is the last time that she will be coming like this. Now, it does, does that mean that she's never going to appear again to individuals? I don't know. We don't know that. But it's the last time she's going to be coming like this. You know, does that mean this many apparitions over the course of this many years daily? Um, whatever it means, it places a great significance on Medjugorje. Like, like that's it. There's no more after this meaning in again in, in sort of my understanding of that this is the culmination this is this is what this is what all of these other places have been sort of building up to and um you know the again I go back to the plan that God has we don't know what that plan is she didn't give us a you know five point plan in a in a in a uh, PowerPoint presentation so we don't know what it is but we know if it's from heaven it's something beautiful it's something Something powerful. It's something incredible. We also know because she told us that she's come here to fulfill what she began in Fatima, that probably the triumph of her immaculate heart has something to do with it. We know that she's given secrets in Medjugorje. We don't know what those secrets are. We know what some of them are about. Um, so we know there's a lot that's coming in these times. And, you know, some of it may be difficult. You know, a lot of it is going to be beautiful, but bottom line, like you said, if you begin living the messages really in your heart, we will be prepared for whatever it is, good and bad. We will be prepared if we follow the formula that Our Lady gives us and following that formula really is, it's about falling in love with her son. It's about living what the church wants us to live. It's about, you know, fully living that sacramental life that is available. It's about, it's about receiving into our heart those treasures of the church that so many people have discarded in exchange for a Darnell, you know, um, it's, it's living all of that and, and allowing that to have a place deeply rooted in our hearts. Yeah, for sure. Just loving those messages. And I still took from that Darnell is you have to be on your guard to be careful, not to be deceived what you're allowing to grow inside you. You know, the devil's very cunning, but, um, yeah, the sacraments, the messages, the five stones, 
Mm -hmm. Uh, glory, everything's there. And I often find it's like for the great wise divine God, he keeps things simple. The, all the knowledge and the truth are in simple things. And many times that's why she's appeared to children. Mm Those divine messages and truths, you know, keep it simple, -hmm. keep to the message. keep it simple exactly you know and sometimes I think people turn away from the messages of magic I can't tell you how many people maybe you have the same experience where people so many people have said to me over the years well has she said anything new is it just the same old same old and then they kind of dis discard the messages and walk away because they want something sensational they want something you know stunning they want something earth shattering And really what she's saying is what I want is for you to return to my son. And just like any mother, Ivan, the visionary Ivan says this all the time, every single mother that has ever walked this earth has repeated things to her children multi hundreds, thousands of times. And that's what the Blessed Mother is doing with us. She is repeating these messages to us because we, her little kids, are off scampering, doing our things, whatever they are. And we forget in those moments of scampering away, you know, that, that, you know, she reminds us of those things that like an earthly mother would, you know, sit up straight, do your homework, you know, eat your vegetables, you know, that's what she's doing with us. Tell, repeating to us um, those messages that are the most important for our souls and for our lives here on earth. Yeah, I just remembered one little thing I forgot to say earlier when we were reading those messages, especially January the 1st up Apparition Hill, you know, and either you or your children or children's children would regret it. I think there's a great family line blessing coming through there or something Mm -hmm. like that as well. Hopefully it meant for us watching on the, on the internet as well. <laughs> yeah but totally I claim it, I claim it, please. yes <laughs> exactly But, uh, but Mariana said something, I'm sure it's in her book, You know, when these events come to pass, the power of Satan's gone. You know, this is the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, the accomplishment mm hmm of all our plans at Medjugorje. Um, but Marianne, I'm sure, wrote about, we'll understand then why Our Lady says, you know, like, have many children and all that as well. So there's a bit of a mystery. You could take a good educated guess at it. But again, it's hope that we're going to be living in a time where, please God, it's heaven on earth, that new creation. Because again, I've, I've had other people on the channel, good evangelists, good, like well-educated in their faith or apparitions or something. I'm finding quite a lot of people, well, I say a lot of people, I mean the Medjugorje circles that I've known for 15 years in Scotland or the UK even. And it's like, I just looked into why everyone's getting into this, uh, the Divine Will, writings of Louisa Picaretta and um, as a first impression I haven't gotten into it greatly yet but as a first impression these people of 15-20 years love in Medjugorje and they're explaining about the Divine Will era and this mystic's writings as if that's what Our Lady almost is preparing us for that is the new heaven and earth that is after all these events as we will be living in the divine will of God perfectly to fulfill the Our Father prayer and it's as if well what else could be the more better of a triumphant immaculate heart than to live heaven and earth putting it very simply for me so uh, yeah and and we don't know you know we um what i find um in a way exhilarating almost is you know we don't know is that gonna be tomorrow or 500 years from now but i do but i do believe with all my heart that we we are all called we who've been touched by this message we are all called to help prepare the groundwork for those times that you know whether it will unveil and unfold in our lifetime or not i don't know but you know i know that the passion of my life is to do what i can to be obedient to what god has called me to do to help prepare the groundwork for all of that and there is much work to do you know we the lord is the lord needs all of our extended hands to be workers in the vineyard and I, personally i think there's nothing more exciting in the world than to be an instrument in the hands of our lord helping helping people really come to that experience of knowing him and you know is is this all going to unfold in our lifetime we'll see i don't know i don't frankly even think about that i just kind of go okay what is the next right thing for me to do today and what is it that the lord wants me to do next in my life and um i think i think that's what our lady wants us to do she you know she doesn't want us to get caught up thinking about um 
worrying about, fearing, um, or anything, the future, but really living that divine will in our lives in this very moment and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us so that more and more people can have that encounter with God that, you know, we've been so blessed to be able to have. Yeah, for sure. If you don't mind me, if I can ask you, I think we may have covered it last year, but just with that last bit being said, uh, I know Mariana doesn't take anything for granted that she'll be the one to reveal the secrets, although right now she's been charged with that if it happens. Because in her book, she she's more or less saying, I don't know if I'll be alive when these things happen. At least one version has to be alive to, to give the secrets. Is that correct? To well... Um, what they have said is that the secrets will be on, uh, what's the word, um, reveal, not reveal, like will happen in their lifetime. We don't know, does that mean that they all will be alive or one of them will be alive? We don't know. Um, but it would be in the normal course of their lifetime. And they're all in their late 50s at this point. Um, I do know that Our Lady told Vitska, that she will continue to appear to one of them. She didn't say that it would be Vitska. She just said that she will continue to appear to one of them during the time, throughout the time of the revelation of the secret so that she can walk with us through that time. So we also know that that will, that that her presence will be with us during those times. Will it be only one of them? Will it, you know, we know that there's still three of them who continue to have daily apparitions. Will it be with all three of them, you know, we know that at least one of them will be um, still alive at that point because at least one of them will still be having apparitions at that point. One of the three who are still... so. Well, we assume. She didn't... Whether she told Vitska who it would be, I do not know. But I know that she told Vitska that she will continue to appear to one of them throughout those times. Is it one of the three that she's continuing to appear to daily now? That's what I think most people assume, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe she'll stop appearing to the three of them and suddenly start appearing again to one of them to whom she stopped appearing to. We, we don't know just because Vitska hasn't told us that, but we know that it will be one of them that will continue to have apparitions of Our Lady throughout the time of the revelation of the secrets. Right, right, okay. Well, even if we went with the youngest, who is Yaakov, then you can work it from there. But uh... Yeah, right. Mariana, I think, or Ivanka, the van, they're the eldest, I think, aren't they? Yeah. But again, we're only, uh, Yaakov was 10, and I think the eldest was, what, six, 17? 16, 16, yeah. 16 or They're all, Yaakov, as you said, Yaakov was 10, and the rest of them were, you know, 15, 16, 17, kind of in that age range. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah, you wonder why such mystery or lady does it the way she does it, but that's just God's will, I suppose, isn't it? Good question, I don't know. <laughs> A Rubik's Cube try to work out. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right exactly just focus on the prayers and the messages it's so much more peaceful folks <laughs> well and maybe that's really a part of it you know i mean uh, we know that some of the secrets contain things that will be difficult in the future and clearly by not talking that way she doesn't want us to worry about that she wants us to have hope and to have joy and you know the uh ivan often says um he, when he talks to groups, he'll say, did you ever notice that all of us visionaries have gotten married and had children? You should take that as a sign of hope for the future. There is a future. We have a future. And, you know, d don't buy into all of the, you know, doom and gloom, end of the world, apocalyptic times, all of that stuff, because, you know, they who know what's coming down the pike, they're not cowering in their rooms, afraid of what's coming. They're having families, children and grandchildren now, some of them. And, you know, living their lives to the fullest. So that sh we should take that as a sign of tremendous hope for us as well. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. Maybe you know the third part there, and again, it keeps hope um, amongst hard times. And again, Russia's always been key to the Marian apparitions, especially from Fatima and through. Mm -hmm. And again, fulfilling here what I began in Fatima, my immaculate heart will triumph. Mm -hmm. well, back in Fatima, she spoke about how Russia would convert and there would be peace and the triumph and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we see what's happening with Russia just now, and, and especially this past two months. Like, you can see these messages with Our Lady going parallel with the commentaries coming from NATO and what could be building up for the worst and all this stuff. 
but there was a I remember coming across a video years and years ago and I only ever saw it once from one place it was never spoken about with all the people I've met throughout the years at Medjugorje but something happened that I thought was amazing that again it's like we Catholics keep this thing for us and no one else knows about it maybe but something happened with great influence of Our Lady of Medjugorje and it was with President Reagan and President Gorbachev of Russia way back, what, we're talking the 80s still or something, those early years. It was something to do with Maria. They get, she got word to them and it influenced something of their decision for the better. Do you know much about that? But Yeah, you could you know, tell I, me. re I remember, I, I, I um, remember back then, I mean, that's, you know, almost, you know, what, 40 years ago now. Um, I remember reading about it and hearing about it. I don't remember a lot of the details anymore, but yeah, and basically what I remember is what you're what you're talking about as well that that there was a letter written um, to President Reagan from Maria, I guess I, I think I um, that that letter got to President Reagan and it had something to do with with uh, relations with Gorbachev. And I, I don't know, I don't remember the details of it. You think. that would stick in my mind because that's really important stuff. But, you know, that it shows that even from, I mean, that was, that would have been, you know, early or mid eighties, whatever, whatever year Reagan was president was so long ago now, um, how the influence of Medjugorje even back then reached the world corridors of power um, in a mighty way. Who, who knows how that impacted the world? Um, you know, again, that might be one of those things we find out when we get to heaven, God willing, one day, what all that was about and how that how that impacted um, how that impacted world events. I'll try and uh, look out the video and maybe post it in the description box and send it to yourself even because it was it was a really good old video. I mean, it was proper, like, good detail. It went on for quite a bit of time and Mm right -hmm. into some good areas. But off the top of my head right now, actually, I wasn't even thinking this earlier. If it was round about the mid-'80s, it was round about the same time then that John Paul II, Pope St. John Paul II now done the consecration Uh, the world to the Immaculate Heart. I know people debate whether or not with Russia and all this little like, bat mass, but, but there's there's other there's clear history. Even like politicians today, um, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s done a great video about it. Going back to Gorbachev, he made something back in this time frame, um, with America where he he would. make Germany whole, he would put, bring back the Soviets and with the promise for NATO not to expand. I mean, he really put a lot in to making this idea of peace. I don't know if it's linked to with Maria's letter or not, but it was around about the same time period these other things were happening. And uh, whatever it was, obviously brought about a lot of good. And I'd like to think that as the Pope keeps the Fatima secrets in his drawer, apparently, The presidents keep this letter of Maria in the drawer at the Oval Office, just so they know. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a bit of a good thing to do, maybe. <laughs> you never know. A lot of power in those drawers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anything you'd like to maybe finish us off with, a nice story or anything Well, you'd I, like to say I would to like to add one thing at the at the end, and I just want to let people know about something exciting that's uh, that the parish of Medjugorje has started. Uh, and that is uh, that there is an official Medjugorje Information Center in Medjugorje, the purpose of which is to disseminate true and uh, accurate information about Medjugorje to basically be the PR arm uh, for uh, the Shrine of Medjugorje. And um, this information office, there's also one about 12 years ago, there was one established for uh, Spanish speaking countries. It was established in Madrid and it has since then in the last 12 years spread. There is now a Medjugorje information, an official Medjugorje information center in every country in Central and South America, the purpose of which is to bring the messages to those countries. This last June, the parish announced that, they're, that they have established a Medjugorje Information Center for 
uh, English speaking countries, and it is based in Miami, Florida. Um, and the work of the center initially will start within the United States, but the intention is for this Medjugorje Information Center to spread its work throughout the entire English speaking world. And um, I've been blessed to be able to be a part of it, uh, to help with uh, guiding it and leading it along with uh, the man who was chosen to be the president of the center, Mr. Luis Simon uh, out of Florida. And it, the, the goal, and this is all guided by the Franciscans of Medjugorje, the parish of Medjugorje and the official Medjugorje Information Center in Medjugorje. And the goal is really to, uh, to infiltrate, <laughs> to use that word, um, all the more um, the world with the messages of Medjugorje and what the Lord is wanting to do. So we've got a lot of exciting, uh, we've got a lot of exciting projects. We've got, we're doing a lot of sort of from the ground up building right now, but um, I will uh, give Mark the, the website of, uh, of our center and maybe you could post that in the description box or I don't know if you could put it on the screen or whatever um, later when you're editing. Uh, but we would love to have people check out our our um, check out our website to see the work that we're doing. One of the things that I, I just want to throw this out there, we have a section of the website which is called Fruits of Medjugorje, where we we want to collect information about how Medjugorje has impacted the world. And there's a lot of that stuff that's already been collected that was submitted to the Vatican for the investigation. Um, but we but we're starting kind of a new campaign to collect the stories. And we have questionnaires on, on the Fruits of Medjugorje section of our page, where we would love to have people fill out the questionnaires to share with us. You know, if you're a priest who got your vocation through Medjugorje, please fill out that questionnaire. If you're a sister who got your vocation through Medjugorje, if you're a lay person who had a conversion through Medjugorje, if you're somebody who's been healed through Medjugorje, there are questionnaires for all of those different categories. We would love to have you fill those out so that we can we can have that information. We, we, we want to collect as much of this information as we can. And eventually we want to be able to show the statistics for Medjugorje's impact in the United States and in Scotland and, you know, England and New Zealand and Australia and Ireland. And so we're, we're just at the building stages of this. And but we're very excited about all of the um, activities that we have. Uh, on our hearts and on our minds to be able to do with this center. So I just wanted to to add that little thing at the end. Oh, sounds great. And any information you can give, uh, the, the doors are wide open when it comes to Medjugorje or anything for Our Lady. So fire it all over and it'll all be there. Awesome. And Thank the you, Mark. In box, folks, if not on the screen, it's going to be in there. And keep an eye on the community posts as well, because sometimes I put things up there within the channel. But anything on the video I want to get out, it'll definitely be made known. And always check the description boxes. And I just uh, and one last thing, can I add? And, and if we could also, I would love to have people check out uh, the website for the movie as well. And maybe we could put that in the description box and on the screen at some point, uh, just to check out our movie, to to like, subscribe, all of that to our social media, uh, all of our social media. Check out our videos on our YouTube channel. Uh, we really want uh, to spread the word about what, what we want to do with this movie and about what the Lord is doing through this movie. So please check that out as well. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what's coming of it. I don't know if you try and get me a little cameo. <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to work something out. <laughs> yeah, many people say I lost my call and I should have been on the stage or in, the, in front of the cameras. Maybe. <laughs> I don't show too much of that on this. How good are you at herding sheep? We might need sheep herders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could give it a shot, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. And thanks again. I hopefully, hopefully it's not going to be as long as eleven months until you're back again. Uh, you're more than welcome. Happy to come back anytime, Mark. Thank you so much for having me on. It's always great to chat with you. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And again, like the Medjugorje spirit, it's always uplifting. It's always real, uplifting, sincere, and uh, always glad it's happened. So thank you very much. And everyone is watching, you know what you need to do? Thumbs up, like, subscribe, get the message out there far and wide to as many souls as possible. And don't forget to look at all the links that will be in the description box below. And uh, until next time, take care and God bless.